Hey guys, my name is Jeff from Nameless Woodcraft, uh, and I've been doing higher end woodworking for a little over a year now. I know that's not very long, but I thought it would be fun to share my journey here on YouTube. This is my first video, and I'll be showing you how I go about making my luxury bath tray. Ironically, I'm not a bath person. It's the second piece I've ever designed, and I've made it a few times at this point. I've made a little, some little improvements here and there, uh, but right now I'm pretty happy with where it is uh, in the, with the build process. Like I said, this is my first video and I'm kind of teaching myself as I go along. I plan on making a lot more and I have some really cool projects coming up that I'm really excited for. If there's anything I missed in this video or anything you would like me to expand on uh, in future videos, uh, leave a comment. Uh, like I said, first video, room for improvement always. So that's kind of all I have for now. Uh, I hope you enjoy. You can probably tell that my milling process is a little different than what you would normally see. It's just because I don't have a joiner or a planer currently. I'm waiting on my joiner planer combo and I prematurely sold the planer that I did have. I have a drum sander and the lumber is already surfaced on two sides. So I just cut it down at the miter saw, join an edge with the track saw, and then resaw at the band saw. It's worked so far, but I wouldn't trust it for bigger projects. After I trace my templates, I just trim everything down at the bandsaw. I have to say, the most annoying part of the build process is the bandsaw blade changes.
After everything's cut down to size, I attach everything with double-sided tape. I love that stuff. Then bring it over to the router table, which is still probably the only piece of equipment I'm still a little nervous about. With all the side pieces routed out, all that's left for the sliding arms and the side baskets is the cross pieces that hold them together. Everything is one inch wide, except for the very front of the arms. It's also cut a little long for what will eventually be dovetails. It's the same idea as a drawer. If you're constantly pulling on something, you want it to withstand that force, well, like forever. All of the cross pieces get small dominoes. Not for strength, it's just for lining everything up. I just lock my domino into the moxin vise and go to town, being careful to reference the same side of both ends. I used to use wood glue with a dab of CA glue. This might cost a little bit more, but it helps me line everything up much better.
I route all of my holder slots using another template, but I cut the hole for the book stand by hand. I take out most with a forcener bit and then clean the edges with a chisel. When I'm done with that, I attach the sides for the main body assembly. Square everything up and then cut dados for the sliding parts. A quick sand and then it's time for finish. I'm using my own finish, I've dubbed it Green Stuff. It's hemp oil, coconut oil, and beeswax. Uh, despite the name, it doesn't actually introduce like any color into the wood. It dries really well and it looks good and it's pretty durable. Highly recommended. <laughs> 